happy Juneteenth. I figured today is probably the best day possible to highlight some black authors that you need to be supporting that I never see people talking about. Like on a holiday that y'all didn't know existed before recently. But it, I, anyway, anyway, anyway. Hello friends, welcome back to Shelby in the Book Club. I am Shelby Monet and per the intro to this video, we will be talking about a bunch of black authors that I think you should be supporting all the time, but especially today because it is Juneteenth. Um, I don't see enough talk about this that could bring up a conversation of I need to continue to diversify the accounts that I'm following um, and the kinds of readers that I'm following, but... We is going to talk about it. All right. If you like to hear it, here it go. Before we get started, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me down below some authors that maybe you haven't seen me talk about, um, Black authors particularly, um, that you don't really see spoken about on the internet often. Um, you may be helping a friend, okay? If you like to hear it, here it go for real this time. Okay, these are in no particular order. I was like pulling stuff off of my bookshelf. Um, so I'm just going to talk about them as I see them in this pile that is next to me. I will link everything down below if you would like to support me and support this channel. <sighs> support my Amazon storefront. That will help me a ton. It will continue to allow me to buy books, read them, and continue making videos. So there's that. So first, Daniel Black, Don't Cry For Me. This book has been on my mind a lot lately because I recently read um, Devil Is Fine by, I can't remember the author's name right now. I will put a picture of the book on the screen. This and that book have similar um, subject matter. Um, and that is another Black author that we should be supporting also as well. Um, so this book has been on my mind a lot. I absolutely love this book. You guys may remember when I read it if you've been subscribed to this channel for a while because I did do a review on this. Daniel Black is awesome. He has other books. You guys may remember me also reading Perfect Peace by Daniel Black, which baby, if listen, if you want to read a book that's going to shock you down to your core, read Perfect Peace. Baby, I'm still a mess over that book. Like every once in a while I think about Perfect Peace. And I'm like, what, what all, what all did I read? What all, what all is happening? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> um, but why are we not lifting up Daniel Blackmore? Like he is a phenomenal writer and he is one of those writers that n both of his books are very different, which I love that in an author. I love diversity in style, in subject matter. Like sometimes you pick up a book and you feel like, um, it's, it's like the, the multiverse of the same person um, when an author is writing. And you don't get that at all with Daniel Black. This book in particular is a letter from a father to a son that is in the LGBTQIA community. And, you know, kind of explaining to his son his life and why he treated his son the way that he did. Like the traumas and things that he experienced that caused him to treat his son the way that he did. I thought it was amazing, um, especially on the heels of Father's Day. I feel like um, a lot of black men in particular are emotionally absent. Um, that's another conversation. So it felt good to <sighs> see a vulnerable black man. It felt good to see that. It felt good for a black man to be able to not only write something like this but to just be like hey I'm hurting too right which is not something that any black woman has ever negated we've never negated that you had issues baby we just is saying that you need to handle them better and that your issues shouldn't stop you from handling your business you feel me you you okay next Woo, y'all gonna get tired of me hooting and hollering about this man here. I'm doing it all by myself too, and that's all right because I keep screaming his name, Victor Laval. I ain't read a book by him that wasn't good, and I don't understand what y'all's issue is. Why is y'all not reading my friend's stuff? I say that he my friend because he followed me on Twitter, and he has like responded to some of my tweets before, so that make him my friend. That's my friend. <laughs> that's my friend. I love that man so much. My God, today. Like, 
big machine this is good i actually want to read this again um lone women the changeling like what what all what is it because you think it's like he technically it's horror i feel like his things lead a little bit more towards sci-fi to me um because it ain't scared me yet um that don't mean that his next book ain't going send me down to a church with some holy water and need exorcism you never know but again phenomenal writer what i will say is he likes to world build he is going to spend time building these characters building this world putting the pieces together for you and then he is going to shove you off the cliff <laughs> very quick fast in a hurry um he dark humor like he's funny in places i don't like i what are you waiting for what are you waiting for what are you waiting for you need to be reading Vixen of all immediately read all of his books right now oh another person that i love so this one deshaun charles winslow this was was it a book club pick i know i read it with just i think it was a combined book club pick decent people he this is his second book the first one is in west mills you need to read both of them they are sister books they take place in the same town and world another very good writer the subject matter of these stories is phenomenal both books are not super long um quick reads but this one oh all my highlighting and annotations look so pretty they look they all nice and neat <laughs> um that makes me happy this one was more of a mystery whereas the first one was like leaned a little more lit fic um even though i think they're both considered lit fiction don't remember but this was good like it was so good and this one i didn't know who did what okay it was like true mystery like i was confused up until the end and i loved every second of it um so this one three sis three siblings are murdered and we're trying to figure out who murdered them in this little town that is racist um and it's kind of like the white side of town black side of town and their brother um their half brother is the suspect so we are we get the perspective of his girlfriend who comes home and finds out all this information and then we get to connect the pieces and we meet all these other people in town and who could have possibly did it and how they felt about the siblings and all the things this is good this is something that i do want to read again um deshaun charles winslow i listen he is one of those i will read anything that he puts out like all he has to do is just send it down to the house i will read it Shook. next we have Trinity by Zelda Lockhart. I don't know why I don't hear y'all talk about this book more. Y'all, y'all be getting on my nerves. That's what it is. Y'all, y'all make my nerves weary. Um, because y'all want to have certain conversations in real life, but then when there are books that have those same conversations, y'all don't want to have them. And I keep saying. I keep saying that fiction is actually where the work gets done. It's not in the self-help books. The self-help books give you a template. The real work, the real feelings you're going to come across in fiction. This tells the story of a family, of the men in particular of a family, um, and all of the trauma that they go through, right? And how that trauma is passed down. But we also get a magical realism aspect of it because there is a spirit that is following the journey until that spirit is born phenomenal story phenomenal story i believe zelda lockhart has other books um yes one two three four five six six other books um that i'm gonna have to purchase and look into but i've never like I, I, the only reason I picked this book up is because I saw the cover and I was like oh that looks pretty cool and I saw that it was a black author so I bought it and then I read it and I'm like baby this is directly up my alley so if you like magical realism if you like historical fiction there's even talks of PTSD in this from war which is important 
like hello i think i did a video on this one too you have to read it next all snap the, the pile of books is falling hold the phone y'all don't fall don't fall don't fall don't fall please don't fall like that's gonna do anything okay next up maurice carlos ruffin i never hear y'all talk about him i have heard a lot of speak of this particular book i think because it is historical fiction and a lot of people do enjoy historical fiction and the synopsis spoke a lot about it being about spies excuse me black spies in particular during the civil war um and i think that's why this piqued a lot of interest y'all don't never talk about him the way that he is writing in this book and i believe i, I in the video that i did for this one y'all got a lot of videos to catch up apparently because these last couple books i've been like oh i did a video on that oh i did a video on that oh i did a video on that <laughs> um i talked about how although this was my first time reading this book reading this author um it took me a while to get into the groove of this book right historical fiction is right up my alley talking to my friend Sarah I realized that there should be conversation around having to read all of an author's work to really understand who they are as a writer um and that's what this book brought up to me but it was so good like his writing style his thought process like once I finally got to what the book was actually about like once we got into it and I understood I understood I, like I got to see how great of a writer he was why are we not talking about him more and I think it might be because if you aren't already a fan you may pick up one of his books and not really see the vision for it right away you may need to be having a conversation with your friends that read a little differently than you or maybe are already a fan of his to whatever the to, to get you to convince you because that's what happened to me but still the things he was doing with his writing, like once I got it, I was like, now he in here. <laughs> now he in his writing bag. Like, go on and buy his books. Stop playing with me. Next, another one. I should cuss at y'all. I really should. I should cuss. Leslie Penelope. The Monsters We Defy is amazing. It is amazing. It's got witches. It's got magic. It's got all of the things. It takes place in Washington, D.C it's so good why did i have to find out not only that she had a new book out i will be reading this soon but and also she has like a whole series like why are y'all not what <laughs> what are we doing we need to be uplifting her and she's beautiful she is beautiful um if you have not read the monsters we defy um this follows clara johnson who can talk to spirits there is a like disease going around town and all of the teenagers and things are acting weird and she's trying to figure out what that's about so she talks to her friends on the other side and she is sent on a mission to retrieve an object that is causing all of the things that is happening it was funny there's a lot of good information in it um it is very very black i love it um it was a good story the audiobook is phenomenal I've read both. I've read the book and then I listened to the audiobook also as well. Now, this new book of hers, there's a blurb. That's another book. Um, Remembrance by Rita Woods. Y'all don't be talking about that neither. Anyway, um, this one from the synopsis is basically about Lake Lanier. And if you know anything about Lake Lanier, then you'll know why we probably all should be reading this. But um it says jane edwards hasn't spoken since she was 11 years old when armed riders expelled her family and every other black resident from their home hometown now 12 years later she's found a haven in an in the all-black town of onessa onassa but the construction of a dam threatens to wash her home under the waters of the new lake jane will do anything to save the community that sheltered her so when a man with uncanny abilities arrives in town asking strange questions she she wonders if he might be the key but as a stranger hints at gods and ancestral magic jane realizes she knows this man only the last time she saw him he was dead that's my kind of carrying on I don't even know listen baby if you if you was dead the last time I saw you I would prefer to see if I see you again 
I, I would prefer that you was the way that you was when I saw you the first time. I don't have time for all that kind of shit. Just, you know, leave me out of it if you can. All right? Okay, cool. Next, in the same vein of fantasy, and this one I have not read yet, but my friend of Brooklyn Book Bell here on the Instagram, Felicia, my Lisey, um, Minion by L.A. Banks. This is a whole series of like a fantasy series by a black author and I never hear y'all talking about it. Like, I guess the point of this video is, is that y'all are asking for certain types of books. Um, y'all are asking for books in certain genres by black authors and they're here and y'all just be ignoring them. I don't, <laughs> y'all don't be looking is anyway so this says all damali richards ever wanted to do was create music and bring it to the people now she is a spoken word artist and the top act for the warriors of light records but come nightfall she hunts vampires and demons predators that people tend to dismiss as myth or fantasy but damali and her guardian team cannot afford such delusions especially now when a group of rogue vampires have been killing the artists of warriors of light and their rival blood music strange attacks have also erupted within the club drug trafficking network and drawn the attention of the police but these killings are a bit out of the ordinary even for vampires I plan to read this soon um I think I was waiting for my mom I think I wanted to read this with my mommy um so that's why I haven't started it but I never hear y'all talking about LA Banks like ever <laughs> ever had it not been for Lisi I would have never known about it something I finished recently the other princess by Denny S Bryce this was such a cute historical fiction um, it tells the story of Sarah Forbes Bonetta, the kidnapped African princess that is rescued and presented to Queen Victoria as a gift. And Queen Victoria takes care of her throughout her life. We learned, so I, like I learned so much stuff that I had to like actually Google to see what was correct and what wasn't. Um, it is based on Sarah Forbes Bonetta's real life. And if you like historical fiction, you'll love this. It was an easy read. There's a lot of information. It kind of goes through the stages of her life, like what Sarah remembered in Africa um, to her being in the presence of Queen Victoria, like presented to Queen Victoria to, to the beyond. This author also has other historical fiction. So she has Wild Women in the Blues and In the Face of the Sun, two other books that I also want to read. This is amazing. I don't know why I haven't heard more about this book. I will say, depending on where you are in your journey with historical fiction, like if you just recently started reading historical fiction, this is going to be a book that is amazing to you. If you are someone like myself that reads a bunch of historical fiction, you may only find this okay. Read it anyway. I thought it was good. And y'all just be listening to me anyhow. Tanana Reeve Do, The Reformatory. Now, you will see that I have not finished this book. I have read other books by Tanana Reeve Do. I never hear y'all talking about how great this lady is. I'm glad that The Reformatory kind of put her out there a little bit more. But like, her book of short stories, what is it called? The Good House, I think it is. That was amazing. Like, I listened to that as a comfort read ain't that crazy you listen to horror as a comfort read we could talk we talk to my therapist about it don't don't bother me talk talk to the lady about it don't bother me but like her writing style the reason that i closed this <laughs> is because it scared the mess out of me i the way that she is able to write suspense on a page I, baby when i take i slammed this book so damn i, I and put it right i tucked it right up here on the bookshelf I baby uh-uh play with somebody else <laughs> play with somebody else but the fact that she was able to write that well in order to do that um I want to read more of her books but I just never hear y'all talking like outside of the reformatory she has other books why are y'all not do I have to do everything myself do I next 
neighbors and other stories by diane oliver i discovered her because of book of the month i had never heard of diane oliver before apparently she is a black author that died in 1966 at the age of 22 um leaving behind stories I, I have not read this yet i will be reading it soon but like y'all don't <laughs> y'all don't tell me nothing y'all don't be saying nothing and i don't understand what y'all's problem is plus look at this cover isn't this beautiful like i want this art blown up so that I can have it in my house. It is beautiful. I'm gonna buy it. If, if, it's, if it's black people on the cover, I'm gonna buy the book. Whether I read it or not, I'm buying the book. It got colored people on the front. I'm buying it. I don't care. Leave me alone. Um, Next. I don't hear y'all talking about how good the 12 Tribes of Hattie is. Ayanna Mathis was writing okay i heard this was good too i haven't heard it from a lot of people because do y'all not know who yana mathis is did y'all not read the 12 tribes of hattie where were y'all what all i'm tired of getting on here fussing um have not read this yet um i think i'm saving this for a i don't know what i'm saving it for I don't know if I'm told some. I probably told somebody that I would buddy read it with him because I do that a lot. And I'd be like, yeah, I got the book. We're going to read it together. This don't never happen. Um, the 12 Tribes of Hattie is a multi generational story, which is why I loved it so much. Y'all know I love to see things that span across genre, like across generations. I want you to be able to explain to me why your mama and them was a hoe. You feel me? That's my kind of carrying on. This is also multi-generational, I believe. Um, so from the moment Ava Carson and her 10-year-old son, Toussaint, arrive at the Glen Avenue Family Shelter in Philadelphia, Ava is already plotting a way out. She is repulsed by the, the shelter's squalid conditions, the filthy bathrooms, the barely edible food, and the shifty night security guard. She's determined to rescue her son from the perils and indignities of that place and to save herself from the complicated past that led them there. I ain't seen a review. I have not seen a, um, anything. Like, what, what all? What's wrong with y'all? I don't know um that's all right it's all right don't even worry about it and last but certainly not least my uncle mr percival everett i had never heard of this man before i read james i blame y'all it's y'all's fault i had never heard of him i didn't even know american fiction was based off of his book like do you know how good this book is I don't think y'all really understand how phenomenal this book is and it's really one of those books that if you get it you get it if you get it you get it <laughs> if your mind is there and you have the capacity if you get it you get it a lot of y'all are not going to get it and I could tell by I, I made the I made the shameful mistake of going to look at the one star reviews on James when I tell you that racism is prevalent, when I tell you that for y'all to believe that America is not racist, please just go look at the one star reviews on black books, please, please, because I don't even really think y'all know what Huckleberry Finn is about. And, and how Mark Twain was trying to intertwine um, social commentary into that story, although it is boring as all get out. I don't really think y'all understand what he was trying to do. Just based on how much y'all hate this book. I... 
just I like I really I really don't I don't know y'all is special you know y'all is very special but the fact that I did not know that Percival Everett was a person a living breathing being he got like 27 30 books ain't nobody told me nothing I really feel like we need to be supporting Percival Everett more. We need to be we need to be talking about him and his books way more. Like what is what all is happening? But that is it. That is all that I have for you. Again, happy Juneteenth. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, if you've made it this far, please leave a comment down below with who your favorite black author is and maybe some black authors that you don't see spoken about enough without further ado if no one has told you today i love you you are kind you are smart you are important and i will see you in the next video friends bye